problem is that when you're using a reactive framework that provides these publishers APIs, you cannot just easily extract the current value from the publisher. You need to subscribe to the stream and wait to get a value. And this value may come asynchronously, you know, it may come in the future. It's a sequence of values you're receiving to the stream. So you need to subscribe to this publisher. My view model dot view model value publisher, and then you sync to get, receive values now. Mm -hmm. Let me show you the API. Which in Rx Swift would be observe, I believe. Yes. Right. So you're yes. subscribing to that. Subscribe. Stream. Yes. Yes. Uh, subscribe <laughs> in Rx Swift. Yes. And here you get a value, and then you can say, well, let result. Now we can put a we'll just, yes. assertion here. The problem is, how can we guarantee that this closure was called in the test? <laughs> exactly. Because if this closure is not called. The test is going to be green. The, the test will pass because there's no failing, failed assertions. But actually, it never got here. So we will need to create some, we will have to wait, for example, yeah. for this closure to be called before we finish the test. One way to do it is to create an expectation. Expectation, wait for a result, something like this. And then you say, wait for expectations with a timeout, let's say, of one second or 0 0.1 seconds. And here you say, fulfill. But if is, uh, if I make expectation for 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 fail, uh, I think uh, it's take a lot of time when testing. If I have a lot uh, of uh... absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> and we're gonna we'll solve it. We'll solve it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Why? Because let's say we run this test now. Let's see what happens. Never completed. Need to hold. Yeah. Uh, a reference. We need to hold a reference to the subscription. Otherwise, it's cancelled immediately. Just like in Rx Swift. You know, you usually add the subscription to a dispose bag. Yes. If you don't hold a subscription, it's cancelled immediately. Right. Let's see. Can we run the test? Boom. It failed. So it's running now, but it failed. It failed because we're not mapping. We're just returning an empty string, right? Yes. So now we can just return one here. One. Let's run the test. Let's say we want to make sure that it, it works not just with one, but also works with two. <laughs> and again, we need to do the same dance here with <laughs> yeah, <I love> that. <laughs> another expectation. And now let's say you wait for two on the test. I guess 31 can go away. We want to wait for this one to finish, then we'll execute the second it's, one. It's the second one, yes. So let's say wait yeah, for time. expectation one. I'm out 0 0.1. Two, two. Array. All right. Yeah. Multiple calls made. Oh, that's XP2. Ah, because it's calling this twice now. Oh, OK. So yeah. it doesn't scale. What I'm trying to say is that yeah. using expectations in asynchronous tests, it doesn't scale. And, and it makes your test very slow as well. Yes. What you can do instead is to create a uh, helper. Like a spy. Here, quickly, a state spy or value spy, something like this. And we initialize it with a publisher. Say any publisher, in this case, what is the type? String never. Like this. And here we subscribe publisher. Sync receive value value in 
and we capture this value now in a property. Private setter, so it can only be set internally here by this class, privately. Say all the captured values. So this is pi will capture all the values created in the test. Values dot and value like this. Let's also capture self here. Yes. All right, and here we can store sellable. Or we can actually just hold here private par sellable. Sellable. We just hold the reference to it. So as long as this pi class instance, as long as you hold a reference to the values pi instance, you will hold a reference to the subscription. So here in the test, you can create your values pi, let's say, uh, let pi, because values pi view model dot value publisher. So it's gonna pi on every change yeah. that happened in this publisher. We can write some tests now, assertions. What is the initial state we expect for the value publisher? It's zero. zero. When you set it to one, it should be one. But it's an array. So pi values should be zero. When you set to one, it should be zero and one, right? None. Because remember, you are capturing the, the sequence of this, of this stream, all the values that were captured in that stream. Because that's what a publisher is, right? It's like an, a sequence of events, of values. And you don't need any of this. So when you set it here to two, now the sequence was zero, one. We run this test. optional <laughs> all right what happened here oh it's always returning one yeah now let's implement the value we're just mapping integer to string but again this could be a bunch of logic here and now it's passing so the idea is the same as writing unit tests for anything input output right yes the only difference is that when you're testing a, a publisher a publisher is a sequence of values, and you need to capture that sequence and then assert the transition. You went, it started zero, then zero one, then zero one two, and you can see the evolution of that sequence mm. over time without timers, without <laughs> yeah, waiting for a value to be sent. You know, you just capture that somehow, and you assert yes. them. The only difference is that this you get this value pretty much like asynchronously. That's it, yeah. Again, there's much more to it. You can see in the documentary yeah. yes. 008. Okay, a <laughs> okay. good idea, okay. Yeah, but this is just a simple example. And if yeah. you're using something like Rx Swift, they provide this kind of spies, this kind of test helpers for you. 